Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Sug Talks. I'm Craig Dale, your host, and together with our special guests, we'll take a deep dive into the topics, challenges and opportunities facing SAP users today. Please make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Maria Iadell, who is the Executive Director and Leader of PESGB Conferences and runs the Petroleum Exploration Society of Great Britain, which is PESGB, a membership society with over 4,000 members. And Martin Krangel, IT Business Relationship Manager at Borg Warner and Co-Chair of the Supply Chain Management Special Interest Group within the UK and Ireland SAP User Group. So welcome to you both. Together, we're going to discuss the importance of community and the value of volunteering. But before we step into that, I'd just like to find out a little something about you both. I get up quite early most days and go for a walk before work. I really love the sunrise and think it's my favourite time of the day as we go from night and into day and we get the beautiful colours in, in the sky uh, before the sun actually pops its head up. So I was just wondering, what time of day are you? Are you sunrise, daylight, twilight or night time? and why. So I'd just like to start with you on that, Maria, if I may. I'm an early bird too. I was up at five this morning. I like to uh, have the mornings because they're so full of potential for the rest of the day. If I get up after eight o'clock, I'm just racked with guilt because <laughs> I just missed just like the best time. So I like to get up, I take the dog for a walk, Come rain, shine, darkness, you know, any of that. I just, I just love the mornings. I hate the evenings because I feel like the, it's like Boxing Day. It's like Christmas is behind me. So um, every morning is Christmas morning. Ah, I love that, love that. Thank you. Martin, follow that. <laughs> I'm definitely a morning person and definitely a routine of half four nearly every morning. That's not when I get up that's when i wake up and i believe it's to do with a circadian rhythm uh, for the cycles of your heat in in your body um so then i usually wake up very early and i've started a an initiative recently where i'm calling it stomping not scrolling so like you craig in going for a an early morning walk exercise jog and i'll lose the ter use the term jog very lightly but instead of scro instead of scrolling, I'm stomping around, uh, just getting some fresh air. Regarding the days, um, I I like all of them. I I really enjoy any part of the day. Um, just you know, to compartmentalize it. So, but saying that, I'm a bit like Grandpa Simpson when it comes to maybe ten o'clock at night. I'm I think I'm going to stay up for a while, and I'll just fall straight asleep. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> What, 10 o'clock, waking up at 4.30 and getting to 10, I, I applaud you with that. I think I'm falling asleep by <laughs> half nine. <laughs> but that, that thing, breaking into a jog, I, I do that when I go for a walk, if I'm going downhill, that, that's about it. <laughs> and I suppose like gravity Mar takes Maria, cars. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> if the dog's dragging you in, in any which way <laughs> on your walks, Maria. Yeah, no, he's handy when it's time to go uphill. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh, well, thanks very much for that. And, you know, moving on to our main discussion uh, topic now, uh, which, as I mentioned, is the importance of community and, and value of volunteering. You know, Maria, you run a community for people interested in petroleum exploration. Martin, you're a volunteer of, of our user group a community for SAP customers, partners, and SAP themselves. I've volunteered in things, you know, from my local cricket club to being a board member of the Institute of Association Leadership. So kind of from sports to family to work-related groups, communities play a huge part in all of our lives. So just start with you, if I may, Maria, you know, why do you feel communities are important? Uh, 
communities can be geographic, demographic, based on your hobby, job, or niche interest. There's a, a Nubian Goat Society, which is uh, one of my favourites, and I'm sure they're really lovely individuals, but I haven't joined that community as yet. But the majority of people, not all, look to belong to a group or a tribe. We love to be with people who get us and whatever that looks like. So I imagine today we're looking at communities that we choose to belong to rather than those that we get lumped into. I'm part of the working in the kitchen community and that's not through choice, that's purely through circumstance and logistics. Uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe said, tell me with whom you associate and I will tell you who you are. And that's kind of what that community piece is. This is part of what associations and societies like that we're part of represent. As well as education, opportunities and professional development, we provide validation to say, I belong. This society represents me. It's my interest. It's what I do. We provide networks of like-minded people, sometimes like-minded. Mine are always falling out. But in most cases, to discuss the things that bring people together. So there's a question as to whether our communities have a place in the future, and that's something that really interests me. People are now so familiar with subscribing to groups or tribes just for as long as it's useful to them that they might, they, so they find most of their like-minded people in social media groups, and they're either followers of an individual page or a person. But for those organisations like societies that offer chartership or something similar, they still have an edge. There's a level of kudos associated with their communities that isn't replicable elsewhere. I don't offer chartership. Uh, but we do have personal connections between the members with each other. Some members have been, we've had some who've been with us since the late 60s. And they're, they're connected to the office team and the executive council. And the pandemic's increased this as the members have sought to connect with each other and that new virtual world that we live in. I, may, I blow my own forecast, really, for the demise of societies when I say that our membership is currently on the increase for the first time in five years as people have just tried to connect as a result of being so isolated from the pandemic. Thank you. Very interesting then. You know, that, that sense of, of connection uh, that brings people together and, and gives people, I suppose, hope and opportunity and uh, a, a way into and connecting with that community, that common theme and passion that, that brings throughout. That, thanks for that. And, and Martin, anything to add on that? Yeah, we're social animals, aren't we? I think that's where the struggle has been with with, with this uh, the lockdown, um, simply because we haven't been able to interact. Now we've had Zoom, like you say, we have the social media, uh, but nothing conveys the uh, the the getting together, you know. And most communities, you know, whether it's once, twice, or more regular, you know, once you're there interacting together, you know, you the the problems, the the achievements. You know, you share them easily when you're more face to face. But like you say, it's we've. I don't think we've ever been as empty uh, as social animals. You know, we're lacking that social interaction. So you know, a lot of people I speak to are like you say, feeling a, a sense of emptiness in some areas. So joining like-minded communities, uh, like you say, can bring that sense of fulfilment, that sense of um, you know collaboration there really. Yeah, and and I think you know. Obviously, I, I I know you through through different things as well, Martin. But you know your uh, I think what what is it? What walk and chat that you know you you offer friends, family, or any acquaintances just to get together and go go for a stomp, if you like, on on a weekend or whatever. Yeah, exactly that. And I just think it's a it's the you know the positive mindset and you know the 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 way of helping each other. And I think that's the volunteer mindset by nature you know people always say you know why do you volunteer so much and my counter argument is why don't you you know and it's it's you know it's where do you find the time and i says i'm pretty sure that if you you know don't get me wrong i'm not rushed off my feet doing it but i'd much rather be 
doing something than nothing, you know. And again, that's where it were a real challenge uh, during the, the lockdown. Um, but thankfully, it's ramping up. Like Maria said, the um, you know the 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 subscriptions or the the membership's never been as high. And I run a tots group on a Saturday morning for footballers, three to six year olds. And just before the lockdown, we had about four to five kids in the big sports hall, and that were it. And then as soon as it reopened, and everyone were pinging on social media, does anyone know where I can? You know, my kids can run around on a Saturday morning. I was getting tagged all over. So now there's like nearly 30 kids that have joined uh, on a Saturday morning. It's carnage, but it's great fun for an hour. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. And and just coming back to that piece on, on, on social media, because I don't know, I'm, I'm maybe being uh, old here, but, you know, what, what you were saying earlier about being social animals and you know the the lockdown and and that you know stopping us from from being in contact on a face-to-face -face personal basis the the world seemed to shift a lot more onto the social media platforms and I, I don't know from from my perspective what what I've seen from a lot of it it's 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 pushed a whole negative aspect as well uh, as well as that social, you know, perhaps distant connection, but it just gives a platform as well for for those to bring a, a negative rhetoric out to, to others. And it has that negative side to it. I don't know what you feel about, you know, that, that social media and how that's got elements operated as a community. We have a lot of social media interaction as part of the society where we have a bigger presence on social media than we do uh, as followers, that was we do than members. But they, because it's a scientific community, they like to argue the toss with each other anyway. They're not going to listen to this, so I can say that about them. They really like to argue with each other until they kind of reach a finite point, and I think they've really missed that. So there's a quite a bit of kind of to in and fro in on social media on a variety of different arguments within the science arena. But for us, it, 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 it's not a negative because any kind of engagement is a positive. We don't get them hurling abuse at us or anything, but they, they just like to argue about various points that they don't hold back. Um, and I just uh, I find it really interesting. It kind of gives me a steer as to what the community want to talk about and what I should be putting on webinars about because these are things that get them hot under the collar. I think from from my perspective, sorry, just just on that, I think, and um, I'm sometimes to blame because I like a bit of a wind up on social media when I'm a bit bored. But Craig, Craig, <laughs> I think knows that already. But. Um, I think we're losing what you said there, Marie, about the you know the scientists and sometimes very um, not opinionated, but obviously they've studied hard for 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 their opinion. Uh, and I know it's not the exact percentages, but you know when you when you're talking about conversations and and discussions and the body language and how you communicate, it's the old whatever it is seventy twenty five five, and I know there's there might be eights and threes in there, but you know what I mean. And and it, we you know we've. You know, there's no better argument. There's no better argument when you not uh, not an argument discussion. We don't have, we don't <laughs> have arguments. In, no, we do. No, we don't, <laughs> no, we don't have arguments in our house. We have discussions. Um, so, so you know, we, what's happened now is during the lockdown, we people are right straight away. They'll quote a Google. They'll quote a you know uh, somewhat quickly. Uh, and then even now, it's like when you're in the, when you're in the pub and you're talking about something, you know, it's like I'm pretty sure he scored more goals than so. I, I'll I'll just check that. And it's like, oh, can't we just have a bit of a debate rather than a, an actual factual <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes or no Don't throw the argument? Facts you know, in too quick. <laughs> yeah, well, I always say that sometimes when I say when I'm in the pub and I might be regaling the tale, and my wife will say something, I say, look, darling, can you? Uh, Stop my anecdotes with with, with facts. <laughs> when yeah. I'm to say. <laughs> Don't spoil a good discussion with any facts. I, I, I yeah, certainly agree there. And uh, so you know, co coming out of that, and you know that importance of communities. We we, we talked about connection as a sense of belonging, uh, a theme that you know perhaps we're passionate about. There's also elements as well, you know that 
you know, of, of influence, of, of lobbying, if you like, for, for groups and communities that, you know, if so, if you look at our, ourselves, for instance, and in, in the world of SAP, that, you know, our community of SAP customers come together to, uh, you know, and to be honest, we are here in one way to, to keep SAP honest as well to, you know, if, SAP are looking to do something that's not in the best interests of their customers, then that is what we're here for in the UK and Ireland, to speak up on behalf of those customers. And I'm sure it's the same uh, with, with you, Maria. There is, an, there is only a small element of that because there's not an awful lot that we can say as a, a group of scientists uh, who work within the oil and energy industries because it's such an enormous industry. But uh, they, there is an opportunity for them to uh, discuss and, and lobby, but that's not really, uh, it, it's not something that we necessarily get involved in. It's too, for me, it's too fiery. There is just so much happening um, and we, we would be potentially at risk of protesters. So, uh, <laughs> so we have to be really careful. So I, I try not to get involved in any of that, if I'm honest. Don't want people picketing me conferences. <laughs> well, it's interesting <laughs> because uh, as part of a, a, a community I'm involved in, the National uh, Union of Farmers is uh, part of that as an association. And, and every annual conference they hold, they, they have uh, protesters at, at, at their events. Uh, it, and it was an interesting conversation I had with them about that and how they manage that. You know, I wouldn't think for for our conference having to engage with the local police and to to manage people protesting outside about SAP or any of the partners. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, moving on, uh, Martin, we 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 touched there about uh, volunteers and and you know communities have have a number of pas passionate volunteers and you know I know from our perspective and and other uh, associations rely heavily on them to bring knowledge to expertise and, and time, whether it is, like you say, to coach local sports club uh, or chairing, you know, for as uh, the supply chain management sig sig at our uh, user group. You know, volunteers are extremely important to the success of, of communities by sharing, giving time, experience, knowledge, and sharing all of that with, with other members in the community looking at, you know, building, growing, engaging. The UK and Ireland SAP User Group is a not-for-profit membership organisation designed to help you to get the very best out of your SAP investments and make your job easier. Our focus is bringing the whole SAP community together so our members can learn, network and collaborate to improve their organisation, providing an independent channel through which to influence SAP. For more information and a special offer for our podcast listeners, please visit sapusers.org forward slash pod or email support at sapusers.org. Enjoy the rest of the pod. You mentioned it already, Martin, that somebody asked you the question. I'm going to answer it, ask you it again. But, you know, what drives you to, to volunteer? Endorphins. One good turn deserves another. You know, it's that old, I think it's Simon Sinek, who you know, I think Craig, we've talked about before. I've got a bit of a man crush on him. And he tells the story about <laughs> someone walking down the street and uh, the papers fall out where the rucksack. Uh, so they run up and put the papers back in the rucksack. And then someone comes to them and says, I saw what you did there. That was really good. So doing a good deed not always feels good. The person receiving the good deed feels good. The people watching the good deed feels good. And that's how I feel. I really feel about volunteering, um, because you, you you kind of the conduit, and I'm you know I, I, I again uh, in a bit of an endorphin junkie because I'm on like nearly every committee at, at work. I'd run three football teams. Uh, you know, it's, I'm always a, I've been like that at school. I think you know any anything anyone volunteering apart from Martin, anyone else want to volunteer for this? Uh, you know, so I, yeah, I just think that it, sometimes it's like. You know, again, just it's, it's the helping. But then you, when you volunteer, from my perspective, you kind of either bring the knowledge, the help, 
the expertise, again, loosely termed, but you, you kind of never get the opportunity to work in a different environment than you do in the volunteers. You know, some, if, if, if you're, like for example, volunteering for the, the user group, uh, doing the SIGs, uh, you know, if your job is facilitating speakers, talking to the audience, arranging, uh, you know, discussion, then fair enough, but that's, well, it, can, it is a bit, but, you know, it's just a different, you know, diff, different way of doing stuff, you know, you, you, the daily grind, you know, and again, not a criticism of anyone, but some people happy to get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, play with the kids, but, uh, you know, ad infinitum, and I just kind of think, well, you know, that time and effort in between, if anyone, you know, if anyone needs some help, dun dun dun, you know, I'll be there. <laughs> So, so it's, 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 it, for me personally, again, it's it's it works both ways. You know, I volunteer to help, and and if I, you know, and there's times when, you know, even say initiatives at work where you can see, look, if I get a group of people here together and we volunteer to do summer, and then we set summer up and we give them the momentum, I can, you know, step out. You know, them they, you know, they, they become self-sufficient then. But then when you come to again, when you come to the user group. Wow, it's like next level. It's like you know an MBA in volunteering with with some of these guys. You know when you see you, you know like to you, Craig, Paul, you know up on the stage doing the you know the full conferencing, and then you see other people facilitating events. You know and you're always learning. You know the, the, you're always learning how to volunteer, how to act. You know what you know you, you, your composition. You know what to say, what not to say. Uh, so from a volunteer, yeah, and I just like I say, I think. I did a talk to you before, Craig. I've done a presentation at work to say, you know, to, to my like fellow BRMs, because we are business relationship managers. So we should be, you know, go volunteer for your local user group, your SAP user group. We're an SAP house at Borg Warner, um, you know, and people come to me, Martin, can you fix this? No, uh, that's not my job anymore. So to speak, sound the right job for a third or but you know, but then they say, Well, I thought you were the IT uh, SAP expert and you say, Well, I kinda know what to do, but it's you know, but just that, just get engaged in the community, you know, for me, SAP community, but then again, you know, get involved with the you know, volunteers however you can, charities, um, you know, local sports. And if they don't need you, then you know, you're there as a backup if, you know, some days someone can't turn up. So I could waffle on for hours about volunteering, but I'll just stop there. No, I, I think, you know, that that's great insight. And, you know, you, you touched on there that, that helping and supporting others, but also, you know, the personal development that that you find in, in different ways from the, the different elements and fun. And again, back to that connection, isn't it? And, and communities and building that network. So Maria, anything to, to add around volunteering? I, I don't put my pants on the outside as much as Martin does, but I do, I, I, I sit on four boards and it's not, they're boards that have nothing to do with the work that I do as for my job. They're just opportunities to get involved with and work with really lovely people either in my community or people that I would love, like that I are inspiring to me and I want to, to learn from. And it's a really good way to be in those people's company, to be able to, you know, kind of make that connection with them and take from them what you can. But there's also those kind of local pieces where you can be involved and you can learn. And, you know, like if somebody's doing a litter pick or something, I'm your woman. I, I, I want to join in. I want to meet everybody and uh, and be part of something bigger than myself. And those all of the people who I have these relationships with at work, all the members who volunteer for our various special interest groups and, and sit on committees to help me put conferences together. I am completely in awe of the work that they do because I know a lot of them, they just work like dogs during the day, you know, like they're, they are full on. And then they, I don't know how they fit it in, you know, like evenings and weekends putting me together some kind of like fantastic program of, uh, you know, like reading all the abstracts, grading all the abstracts and putting those and putting me a program together over several days with like 12 streams. and. And I am just so grateful and I get an opportunity to get to know them and introduce them. So if there's something that they need from us, 
you know like they need an introduction to a certain circle or or any way I can help it's a two-way street and in the past I've I didn't always work in science I used to work in the arts and within the arts there's an awful lot of volunteering goes on because there isn't a lot of money in the arts you know so it relies an awful lot on on people volunteering their time and their expertise and I had the most wonderful um, opportunities to to work with volunteers who were having uh, real turning points in their lives as a result of being involved with different projects that we were doing and actually to be part of someone else's journey is 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 really humbling you know I really I get such a lot from volunteering and and like Martin when people go well how do you fit it all in it you know and it's just like well why wouldn't you this is great you know uh, in, inspiration fire well like the fire in your belly and you're away aren't you you know with, with all of this something that you're passionate about you, you will find time and you know I, I think from like what you both said you will also get so many benefits yourself in in doing that so you know thank you very much for your insights in in there so we've touched on a, a number of important aspects of communities so far in, in our chat uh maria are there any other benefits that perhaps we we haven't touched on yet for being a member of a community um the benefits of of like involvement in something uh, a few a few years, eight years ago, I did a fellowship to the US, which looked at uh, community regeneration through the arts. So there's a lot of, because uh, it's community, it's about getting people involved in stuff. And I had a meeting with Boston City Council, uh, who were really difficult to get to know. I don't know if you've been to Boston, but they're very British. Um, and they talked about facilitating a place for artists within poor communities. Uh, because artists were active citizens and that's what they wanted. People who were active citizens who would stand up and be counted, vocalise issues and get involved with their communities wherever you place them. So they would give people subsidised housing if they had a voice. So it was energising and that kind of advocating for the communities was fabulous. So that kind of active citizenship is what we try to build within associations and those people like Martin, who volunteer in you, Craig, you are active citizens. And it, it, like it's rarely people are that selfless that they do this purely for the benefit of others. We do it because we like it. We're not running a holy order. You know, like it's not like a sacrifice to do this. We do it because we get something out of it. We love it. But the benefits don't need to be financial or the perks substantial, do they? You know. It's about learning opportunities, the chance to make contacts and new friends, um, raise your personal profile potentially, which if you, you work with the special interest groups and that kind of thing is a really good way of doing it. People get to know you. Um, there's a love a quote. Another quote was, no involvement means no commitment, no exception, which is a, a writer called uh, uh, Laurie Buchanan. And I thought, yeah, it is. Those people who get, if you don't, if you're not involved in it, at all you can be a member of my society but you don't turn up for a webinar you don't you know you don't read the magazine you don't do any of those things you have no commitment to the society and i and the people that we want are those ones that get involved so it's that commitment to participate within the society is what we're after and and often or not the the ones that don't participate are the ones that receive no value and, and then they leave you know, it, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it's that cycle, isn't it? You know, you, you, you give and you give and then you will almost uh, always receive and, you know, you, you get what you put in, in in most things, I believe. And I, I like what you said there about, you know, that grow, growing your network, you know, the more people you engage with and meet uh, and that will bring increased opportunities for you. And Martin, anything to add? Just that, I mean, it's again, we, I think we, obviously we, we, we're all passionate about it. So like you say, the networks, um, and I think the volunteers, for example, for me, so when I moved to Borg Warner as, as a, the BRM, it's the first time I've like been in a leadership role. Previously I wore a programmer, you know, coalface, ITer, if you want. Um, 
So I joined, for example, the UK IT Leadership Network. Uh, I suppose, well, rose, rose through the ranks to be quiz master. That's all I'll say. But it's just, <laughs> but it's just, just been involved there. You know, I, I, it was a bit of a it was imposter syndrome. You know, I'd go, I'd go and sit in these. So every month we have these, uh, we have sort of these face to face where a sponsor would do something, and then we'd all sit and in like gaucho in Leeds. You know, all expenses, all expenses paid. What you know, a nice meal and and, and, and like one drink and. I always like to be different. So when we're in Gaucho and everyone having 24 ounce steaks, I had the risotto. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but even then, you know, just, just being involved with that and then, you know, volunteering, you know, just being involved, engaging, you know, we have an app for stuff. And, and again, it's, it's, we had a bit like Craig, you did with the, with the user group and the 11s is, you know, and then we did with the, with the drop-ins and like I said before with a quiz, it's just, you know, engaging people and I think you know keeping people engaged when you know you know when you see a bit of a lull when you can see that maybe engagement's lowering you know just to have that uh, awareness to be able to see that in your communities or in, in areas you know different parts and say look guys come on you know you know get to, let's get together and you know let's make a difference thank you well, you know, that, thank you both. It's been fascinating for me to, to listen to all of the different aspects as well and, and chat with you through this. Uh, we're, we're almost coming to the end of our time and it's absolutely flown by. And, okay, in, in just to close off now, ju just a couple of quick things for, for each of you. So, for Maria, from, from your perspective, you know, why should people get involved in PESGB? Well, if you're if you're into oil at the moment but if we could be expanding that to a wider energy uh, portfolio uh, but if people if they're involved in oil uh, or energy exploration it's a great network for meeting people and we're the only one that is kind of for gb and we're with we're focused on the uk all the other uh, societies are either us based or europe wide so uh, the people that you meet, you're more likely to meet in person because it is UK based. And, it, and, it, and it's nice, I'm in charge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's bound to be lovely. It's bound Mary. to be bound lovely to be. then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Martin, uh, we, we're kind of doing this for uh, UK ISUG. So from, from that perspective, why should people get involved in UK ISUG and take their involvement further by volunteering? To get very close to the latest and greatest in SAP, for one, uh, you, if you if you're in you join in the SAP user group because you've you, you're involved in SAP in your business. Um, I know some people are very focused on their areas, but the beauty of it, and especially like at the conference, you get to you, you get exposed to the latest and greatest, and so many opportunities in there. But to be a volunteer, you know, you get free presenter training, which is fantastic. You get public speaking opportunities, which is way out of your comfort zone. You know, you get memberships on discount, on accommodation. Uh, and I always say that, you know, if you've become a volunteer and then you start networking, it's like having some uh, a network of free consultancy at your fingertips. And it's, you know, and it's the intangibles. Uh, that when you meet these people as a volunteer, you're kind of the next level up. You know, you're not just joining as a as an attendee. You know, you're in the when you're a volunteer, you're like the, the, you are in the inner sanctum of this the the SAP uh, community. So you know, there's, it's the intangibles. And when people say, "Can you justify you know your membership?" Well, you say, "Well, mm, yes and no." But then sometimes you reach out to someone in the community when you've got an SAP problem, and they give you an answer. And that's happened loads of times. And to have that knowledge, it would cost you thousands of pounds in consultancy. So, you know, get volunteering, get speaking, get involved, uh, and then just make a difference, you know, and help out your, your, uh, your peers. Thank you very much. And uh, there you have it, you know, engage in your communities, get further involved with volunteering in communities and really 
go for growth yourself personally your network and also in ways you can really give back to those communities maria martin uh great chat and you know thank you so much for your time and insights and thank you all for listening uh, we hope you enjoyed the conversation and found it valuable if you'd like further information on our user group, please visit sapusers.org or follow us on any of the main social media platforms. So until the next time, stay safe, stay well and keep washing your hands.